and welcome to this video how you can receive messages with Apache Kafka. To get started here we first need to hook up our flowable work with Kafka and afterwards we can go ahead and then configure everything in design. Now let's look at our configuration and here is the configuration of my work instance where I need to say application Kafka enabled to two. That you only need to do when you have the out of the box flowable images. When you have a customization, then in this case you can go ahead and include the spring dependencies for Kafka to go ahead and uh, get started with Kafka. Important is that you also say spring Kafka uh, bootstrap service to your service that you can reach those. So that's basically the option to configure them with Kafka itself. Now, in the next step, we can go to Flowable Design and start modeling. Therefore, we need to create a new app. So let's uh, create Kafka example. Uh, we don't need to configure anything specific here. We can simply say create, and then we can go ahead and create a new event. Now the event is the definition of how a message from Kafka looks like. I'm going to call that event now customer. And uh, once we have called that customer, we can specify what we have inside our event. Basically, what are we going to receive as a payload from our message? And therefore, I'm going ahead and defining a few different fields. The ID is, or the name is basically here for the first one, ID. So I would like to have in my message one field called ID. I can decide which type it is, either it's something text-based it's a Boolean value, it's something number-based, or even something more complex, like a JSON. I'm going here for a simple long, and then I say this here with the operations or configurations down here is also a correlation parameter, which means that based on this ID, I'm deciding to which case or process it belongs to. Now let's save that, then we are adding a few more fields. Let's say we have a name as well, then we have a description, both of them are text-based, and last but not least we have active, which is a boolean value. With that we configured now a really simple event, which uh, relates to our customer, and we can go ahead and start with specifying how we can receive one of those events. And therefore we need to create a channel. So let's say create then channel, that's our Kafka inbound channel. And then we can go ahead and specify how we can receive that event. So we have here first a type, which is either inbound or outbound. Inbound is exactly what we would like to do. Then we can specify the implementation. Kafka here is one of those, and that's also the one which I'm going to pick. Then we have a uh, subscription method where we can go for topics or topic partitions. Normally you would like to go for topics and then you can specify how your topics are called. For me, that's customers. We have here advanced configuration options as well as retry configurations. I'm not going into details there. Please read the help text here uh, as well as the documentation in case you have a need for that. Now to simply get started, we don't need to configure that. And that's why I'm going now to the pipeline. Now the pipeline here is really important that you configure it since in here uh, we specify what happens when we receive something through our customer's topic. First of all, we need to specify our message format, which for me is JSON. There we can then specify that we would like to deserialize it first then how we detect our event key. There you can either say it's fixed, what I'm going to do, or that you uh, figure it out based on your uh, JSON payload, for example. We say fixed value customer, that's exactly the key of this uh, model, so the event model over here. And then um, once we have done that, uh, we can also say how we would like to extract our payload. Here we are going for the simplest. We just map each field in the JSON to a field of our event. We can decide how we would like to detect our tenant. I don't have multi-tenancy here, so the default option is fine. 
And then as a last step, we have an internal event transformation, which you probably don't need to worry about. Now let's uh, save that. And then we can start with uh, consuming our event. And for consuming the event, I'm going to create a new case, but you can also uh, use a process in here. I say that's my customer case. I simply create that. And in here, when we select now the case plan model, so that one element which is in here, we can say that we have an inbound event and that we link it to an existing one since we already created it. That's the customer. And after that, we can go to the payload mapping here and say uh, how we would like to have it behaving. Now here, the behavior, we have either start a new instance, which always starts a new instance, or only in case there's no other instance already running. Now the second option takes actually your correlation parameters into account. So when we have with the same correlation parameter already an instance running, it's not creating a new one, otherwise it will create a new one. That's actually what I'm going to go for. And then we can uh, configure in here the different fields which we would like to have. So customer ID, customer name, customer description, and then uh, customer active uh, at the end. So that is how I would like to store that information on my uh, case. And with that, I can say finish. And I only need to set the inbound channel. Actually, the inbound channel here is even kind of optional. You need to ensure that the channel is part of your app to decide that this event is triggered. Only the event key is relevant. Now in the process or in this case, we can go ahead and add a new uh, task. So that's our customer review task um, where I'm going to add the form. So that's my customer review form. And in here, I am just adding a few fields that we see that those are arriving. Customer name, then the customer description, and then a simple switch uh, component for customer active and with that we have that uh, simple uh, form here done and we can say here this task is automatically enabled which happens by default. Now since the second event with the same ID is not getting uh, or is not triggering a new case we can handle that here as well. So we can introduce here an event listener and say this event listener listens to the exact same event. And for this event listener, we now need to configure the um, ID here, what it needs to be that we would like to react on it. So assuming we have, for example, two customers, not both of them should be updated, only the one where the ID from the event equals to our customer ID. So here we can just simply use the backend expression for customer ID and only the relevant case gets notified here. I'm saying here, uh, let's just update the name, the description and the customer active that we have the updated values of those. You can also skip here fields in case you don't need them. For example, I'm doing that for ID since the ID is already there. And now let's say we have here on review update which is going to take the same form than the one which we created before. So our customer review form. And I would like to be able to just do all of that more than once. That's why I'm enabling a repetition here so that we can say uh, they should happen uh, basically as often as they want to. Let's align that nicely. And then once we save it, uh, we are basically done here with our basic um, case. I'm going to publish that now. And once published, we can then go ahead and send a new event. Now, you don't need to go to global work here since typically we receive that event from external. So either you have something sending your event or you use something like uh, the control center here to say for my customers, um, topic, I'm going to send a new message. 
So I'm producing here now a new message and there's something pre-filled in here, but that doesn't work for me. I would like to have an ID where I say that's the ID one. Then I would like to have uh, a new name. That's my customer one. Then next I say I have a description. This is my first customer. And then I also add active, which is a Boolean. Let's say that's false for now. And I put you that message. We should see that in a second, how it pops up uh, down here. Uh, there we go. Now we have put you that. And when we now go to global work and just refresh here, we see that we have now our first customer. We can open the customer review task. We see here the information which we have provided. I just claim that task and complete it. And once completed, uh, we could send now the second message uh, to actually update that customer. So let's say we still have customer one, this time updated. My, this is my first customer updated. And then let's say active is this time true. We produce that message. And uh, once produced, it should pop up over here. And we now just um, reopen that. We see we have now a review update where we see here customer one updated. And this is my first customer updated. And you also see that active is now true. To finalize all of that, we have also in control something about events. So when you go to cases or processes, depending on what you are working on, and then click here on event subscriptions, you see that you have two subscriptions in here. Now the one which was created first in my case is actually the one which is listening on the case definition, but doesn't have a case instance. So that is actually creating a new subscription for creating a new customer. While the second one here is customer specific, so that one here has a case instance, and that is waiting for the uh, updates of that specific customer. With that, we have now the ability to receive an event with Flowable coming through Kafka. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.